back for more, Harley. It's Dr. Quinzel. Well, Doc, you've got guts. I'll give you that, but that's all you'll get. I don't want to hear about the bomb. I want to hear about what makes you tick. <laughs> that's good. I mean, it's almost a joke. Tell me about growing up. People around here seem to think you have real daddy issues. <laughs> Ha! Who told you that? Was it Penguin? That mutant orphan's the one with daddy issues. I can see this is just too painful for you. We can stop for today. Painful? You think you can hurt me, sweetheart? I've been hurt by the best. Oh, please. Everyone's scarred by their childhood. Not worse than me! Fine. You want to know how I got these emotional scars? I'm listening. All right. I'll admit my parents weren't too fond of me. What makes you think that? Let me see. Quote, son, we're not fond of you. My parents were wealthy, but they never gave me much, especially not their attention. So you must have spent a lot of time alone. Well, I had Mr. Ferris. Was he a role model for you? He was a ferret, a beautiful beast, with gorgeous ringed fur, Mr. Ferris, the ferret. Being an only neglected child, the pet was a brother to me. We were inseparable. Until one night, while Mummy was away, I made the mistake of wandering into my father's study. There I found dear old Dad with our maid, naked. He roared at me, so I rushed out, went straight to bed. Hadn't even had supper. After all, the maid was busy. The next morning, I found Ferris's cage empty and Daddy above it with the widest smile I'd ever seen. That day, my father took away the one thing I'd ever loved. Then he beat the shit out of me. I just remember him standing over me, punching and laughing, laughing and punching and punching. <laughs> Personally, I never got what was so funny. But that's the thing about comedy. Not everyone gets the joke. You're not defined by your father. You don't have to destroy the world. I can help you if you help me. 